NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta said Ukraine's allies must help it to prevail, as Tuesday marked 1,000 days since the start of Russia's full-scale invasion. Upon his arrival to a meeting with the European Union defense ministers in Brussels, Ruta said this would require more aid to Kiev as he noted Russia's support from North Korea, China and Iran. The EU talks come after President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with US-supplied longer-range missiles. In response, the Kremlin warned the move would escalate international tensions even higher. First of all, Ukraine. Today marks a thousand days of the full Russian onslaught, the unprovoked full Russian onslaught on Ukraine. Uh, so today we'll discuss how we can help Ukraine to prevail. That means more aid, more money we have to make uh, available to them, particularly now that the North Koreans have come on board. And we know that China is helping Russia with the war effort. We know that Iran is supporting Russia with the war effort. And um, as we also know, Putin has to pay for this. For example, with missile technology um, going into North Korea, which then is a, a direct threat, it poses a direct threat not only to us, but also to South Korea, to Japan, and even to the US uh, mainland. Putin has to pay for this, for example, with missile technology um, going into North Korea, which is... President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia, easing limitations on the longer-range weapons as Russia deploys thousands of North Korean troops to reinforce its war according to a U.S. official and three other people familiar with the matter. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. The official and the others knowledgeable about the matter were not authorized to discuss the U.S. decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's reaction Sunday was notably restrained. Strikes are not made with words, he said during his nightly video address. Such things are not announced. The missiles will speak for themselves. Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets deeper inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. Zelensky's statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building that killed at least eight people in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. Russia also launched a massive drone and missile attack, described by officials as the largest in recent months, targeting energy infrastructure and killing civilians. The attack came as fears are mounting about Moscow's intentions to devastate Ukraine's power generation capacity before the winter. And this is the answer to everyone who tried to achieve something with Putin through talks, phone calls, hugs and appeasement, Zelensky said. The comment appeared to be a dig at German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who spoke Friday with Putin in the first such call with a sitting head of a major Western power in nearly two years.
During one of the unsuccessful offensives of the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation in the Kursk region, the Russians lost 17 military vehicles due to mine explosions. It is noted that the Ukrainian approach to planting mines differs from the enemy strategy on the territory of Ukraine, Forbes reports. The commander of the Ukrainian ground forces, General Alexander Pavlyuk, shared that in the nine days since the start of the offensive in the Kursk region, a third of the Russian military vehicles that the occupiers sent in that direction have been blown up by mines, journalists note. The publication emphasized that the only Ukrainian engineering unit in the Kursk region remains the 12th Support Regiment. It is responsible for laying many mines in the region. The Ukrainian approach to laying mines in the Kursk region differs from the strategy of the Russian occupiers, journalists said. Instead of mining a large area, Ukrainian troops are placing mines on several roads leading to the most critical sector on the western side of the Kursk salient. According to journalists, it was this approach to mining that led to the Russian Federation losing more than 1,500 soldiers daily in the war. In addition, Ukrainian troops, despite the enemy's superiority in numbers, were able to organize local counterattacks. Analysts at the Royal United Services Institute in London, Jack Waddling and Nick Reynolds, told reporters that the enemy's heavy losses could be due to difficulties in detecting mines. However, there is another option, Russian intelligence officers are detecting mines, but their commanders are not passing on accurate intelligence to assault groups. This guess is confirmed by Russian propagandists. They reported that soldiers from the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation were falsely informed that the road on which Russian equipment was subsequently blown up had come under the control of the occupiers. Media previously wrote that Russia wants to return the Kursk region before possible negotiations, but Ukraine is not going to give in. The Russian Federation fears that this region could become a lever of pressure on the Kremlin. In addition, Reserve Major Alexei Getman told what the Kursk operation gave to Ukraine. According to him, the positive effect is obvious even now. There is no point in expanding the territory of Kursk region controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, we are not going to annex these territories to Ukraine. Can the Russians push us out of there? Of course, they can, especially if they bring in more forces. We will not be able to hold out in Kursk region like we did near Pokrovsk. We are already avoiding serious military clashes there, we are maneuvering," he said.